Welcome everybody to the VictoryStore.com Yard Card Podcast and YouTube YouTube School. So today we have with us Chet D. Arnold of Etc. Yard Art. I'm Steve Grubbs with VictoryStore.com, and we're going to spend some time just talking today about about Chet and and how he has become so successful. So Chet, would you uh, tell us a little bit uh, about yourself and about Etc. Yard Art? I'm, a, I'm out of the Dallas, Texas area. Uh, I've been doing this for less than a year um, in the way that it's being done. About 15 years ago, we did the channel letters. We did that for about a year. There was big, god-awful signs that you had to put the channel letters in and, and, and lug that big thing around. And we stopped doing that. and. And when we saw this, we had this done for my son, and my son never smiles for anything. And he smiled. And we knew uh, in July that it was something that we wanted to be a part of once we saw how my son reacted to having um, the yard card uh, done for him. So we're, we're into it, and, and we are still learning, and we hope to be able to continue doing this and uh, continue Great. to grow. And, and so... Tell us, so you launched in July, and um, for a lot of people in the United States, there wasn't, uh, wasn't a lot going on in July. Talk to us about what you first purchased to uh, get your business up and running. The first thing we purchased was the starter kit from, from Victory Store. Um, we upgraded the starter kit. I believe the, the starter kit was around 1300 if I'm not mistaken, and we upgraded to between seventeen to eighteen hundred dollars, and um, we got a lot of the things that we were told we needed, and then we got a lot of the things that that we wanted, and then we continued to to grow from there. Um, from that, from the within the first week of that order, we ordered which is still our favorite setup. It's the girls blue. Uh, I'm sorry, the girls pink and the boys blue that we still use, which to me is a, one of our most popular um, setups that, that goes out week after week is, after week. Is that the It's a Baby setup? No, it's not the It's a Baby. It's the one with the celebra celebration hat. Oh, yeah. Um, from, from Victory yeah. Store. And uh, we, we've used that so much that well, we try to keep uh, up to date on what we know we need. And so we're going to duplicate those two sets um, within the next two weeks going into the, the spring and the summer because there were times where we had it out or scheduled to go out and then people were still requesting it. So um, they were we were able to change them over to something different, but um, going into this spring, summer, we know we want to duplicate those two sets. Sure, absolutely. And, and can you just give us a sense of how many setups are you doing per week now? You started seven, eight months ago, and now you're doing what? We, it's weird. We, we wanted to do, when we first started, we said, okay, if we do one a week, um, one to three a week, we would consider that being successful. Um, and it wasn't long after we got going where we were doing one to three a day. And then our weekends would fill up where we would do 15 sometimes. A couple of times we did 15 wow. on, a, on a Saturday, and that was like two weeks in a row. And then we did 15. We started doing at least 13 to 15 Saturday and Sunday. And that since then has grown to where we don't, we're not necessarily just busy on the weekend where we're doing two to three a wow. day. And we like we like the two to three a day versus the, the just being crazy over the weekend. <laughs> that, that makes sense. And so you keep saying we, who else is involved with you? My, my, my wife um, helps me. Her, the part that she does is um, she sets the signs up for me to, to take out. Um, she helps to store them, to put them in an orderly fashion. Um, to where when we need something, she knows where things are. Now, I don't understand her setup at all. I would, If I have to come in here and do something, she has to tell me where 
where things are. But when she comes in and I'm watching her, she has things set up in a way to where we don't have to search for things. She has things put away together, uh, whether there's the children's things, um, the balloons together, the gifts together, and, and flares and things of that nature. So she has them in a way to where we can get them and go. And if it wasn't for her help, I couldn't. I couldn't do this, not not by myself. And Chet, how how many, uh, how much do you charge for a setup? What is your pricing structure? We we charge on average eighty five dollars, and we get a lot of people who want just price. They like how much for this, and we'll tell them that the average is eighty five dollars. Being in Dallas, um, I know a lot of people don't like to go too far, but being in Dallas, and this is what I do full time. Um, I'll drive an hour away um and you can drive an hour in dallas and still yeah. be in dallas uh fort worth is adjacent and then you have a lot of suburbs to where you 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 will spend an hour um on the road going to setups and we do a lot a lot of driving um uh, and that's just um i think being a male i can go places where maybe a lot of females aren't comfortable um going um, and I can go at night or I can go early in the morning and, and even still be in a bell, sometimes be in places uh, alone. At, that makes me <laughs> sure. So, right. I, uh, but we, you look pretty strong. I wouldn't want to get in a fight with you. I know that. Um, <laughs> so so uh, talk to me uh, about a couple of different things. So first of all, what are your most popular setups or, or, or events that you're doing? We do, the, the most popular thing that we do is birthdays. 98% um, of what we do is, is birthdays. Um, we do very little uh, anything else. Um, on a day-to-day -day basis, we, we do birthdays. And um, that's, that's, we use the group a lot to try to figure out what we are supposed to be doing or what we should expect. There are times of the year where graduation takes over um, and we've only experienced it really the, the fall graduation um, was was our was the time most that that we got into it and we were told to expect more going in, into May and June um, so we have that to look forward to but for the most part we we do more birthdays than anything else yeah we, uh, we expect May and June this year to be especially uh, significant because so many kids have had such a crazy year that uh, everybody celebrates graduation in a big way anyway. So our monthly BOGO, our monthly right. buy one, get one is on graduation sets this month because to, to help people, to help companies uh, affordably prepare for a big uh, graduation celebration. Because you only get to use it once a year. It's not like the birthday uh, items so or maybe you got to use it twice a year but but not at, certainly not as often so talk to me about um, how are you so you've got a lot of customers and and what is your percentage of new customers to repeat customers in a month is it 90 percent to 10 percent uh, repeat customers to new well with us having only been here or going since we'll say the first week in August um most of our it's it's probably 60 40 with the 60 being new customers um we get a lot of repeat and we've started getting a lot of repeat and referral lately um and that's just starting out and and going through it um uh birthdays are starting to come back around again for um uh for that family, if they have multiple uh, kids or other kids, the mom, the dad, we've only recently, within the last two months, start seeing the repeat customers, um, family members in the home. So um, it, it's, we're fairly new to the repeat customers. Great, and that's that leads to a couple of interesting questions. So first of all, how do you take payment? Do you take it at the site or online, or how do you handle all that? We do the payments through PayPal, Zelle, Venmo, Cash App. We do, um, we've, we've done less than a half percent where we take the, the cash on the spot because if we're delivering between um, 
most of the time, 1 a.m. and 6 a.m., there's no time to stop and visit with the customer. And the way we've explained it to the customers, just as they're doing drive-by is because of the pandemic, we don't want to uh, in, put ourselves in a position to where we're endangering our family members by visiting with the customer. And, and we don't want to endanger ourselves by visiting with the customer. But there's been two times where the customers were just adamant to the point to where they would leave the money under the doormat so that because they did not have uh, the, the, the the electronic payment option. Sure. So we we do not. There's been times we turned jobs down because we just did not did not take cash or or payment on site. Um, that slows us down. So if I lose one customer to make sure that the other customers are done in a timely manner, then I, I'm, I'm okay with that. And do you, uh, if you do have to travel a little farther, do you charge that extra supplemental fee? Most of the times that we've been asked to travel further than what we normally would, it's somebody that was referred to us. And they'll generally tell us that, hey, you, you, you did so-and-so, or I was at a party, you did so-and-so. Will you please, and to say that we charge extra, it depends on the situation. Um, I think we've only charged extra on two occasions where if we've traveled outside of our area 15 or 20 times more than that, because it was a referral or to something like that, we, we didn't. We tend to take care of the people who are repeat and referral. So we want them to continue continue to trust us and to call us without hesitation. So we tend to bend a little bit more. And that's the same to me, that's the same as giving a discount um, by not charging them yeah. that extra. And they tend to appreciate that. Sure. A bit more. If you just joined us, I'm Steve Grubbs with victorystore.com and we have Chet D. Arnold of Etc. Yard Art, really one of uh, a very successful yard decor company and, and really showing how to how to get it done. So Chet, you started last, say August, first week of August. And what did you do before? Uh, and let me see if I understand this. You're doing this full time now? I am. Um, so you're before, your, you are your own boss now. Were you your own boss before? I, I, I've, I've always been an entrepreneur. Uh, before. For the past 13 years, I published a local magazine um, called In Mesquite. Um, there's an In Garland and an In Rock Wall. March of last year, I walked out of my office to go on spring break and um, had, you know, we were doing what we normally do every spring break. We go somewhere and I never returned to my office. Um, this past November, we finally uh, let our lease go and uh, we moved everything out of the office. Um, we fully expect to, to go back to publishing our, our magazine. Um, however, if we don't go back to publishing our magazine, uh, we'll, we'll just continue to do what we're doing now. That's and, uh, great. So I, I, I'm a publisher um, by trade. I've always been in marketing. I, well, I've been in advertising and marketing in some form for the past that's, 25 that's, years. So um, t two things. First, I want to talk about the work ethic that it takes to succeed because, you know, I think some people look at what you do and think, wow, that looks easy. I could do that. But we all know to, to start a business, I've started four of them. I get it. It's hard. I mean, you really have to commit yourself and uh, you have to capture moments of downtime. You have to use your time effectively. What, what, if you were to give advice to people that are starting out or struggling or, or just anyone else, talk to me about the type of work ethic that's necessary here. Well, being an entrepreneur, um, that takes a special person to begin with. Um, before or right after high school, I'm an Army infantry veteran. And so the, the work ethic that I have comes from my time being in the military. So I, I think like this, if, if I'm going to go out and I'm going to do a sign and I'm tired and I'm sleepy, at least I'm not being shot at while I'm doing it. So that's my motivation to, to get it done and get back home. Um, the time that it takes to, to do this, you, especially doing it full time, um, sometimes I will take 
a job that um, that's a little bit further away. Um, I will take a job that I don't necessarily, I'm not excited about, and I'll get excited about it. It's just when the customer is, is not conforming or not helping you to help the process, um, I'll do it. And, and my goal there is to, to turn that customer around to where they're happy and I'm happy that I did it. Uh, being an entrepreneur is, 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 is different. Um, the work ethic from that or having been doing this for a while has carried over into doing what I do now. Getting up early in the morning uh, to put the signs out, uh, going to pick up the signs, cleaning the signs, maintaining the signs, and being available for phone calls in the middle of dinner, being available for messages when I'm doing family time and trying to juggle all those things. All those things make for a successful business. Those customers don't realize that you're doing anything other than waiting on their phone call when they message you. And trying to be prompt and courteous uh, when you're tired, um, it's, it's it's uh something that you just have to learn to did, did you grow up in the home of an entrepreneur or did, has it just always been a thing inside of you um it it was never a thing inside of me uh i worked for uh yellow pages um in advertising um after college i worked for a magazine um selling advertising after college and i kept getting fired um and i had an entrepreneurial spirit where I always wanted to do things my way, but the company wanted you to do things their way. And some companies are weird like that. If you don't conform, they don't want you there. And it took me a while to realize that if I was going to be successful and stop getting fired that terminated, then I needed to, to do things my way and I needed to do things for me. And um, 2009, um, I, I, I started my own company and I struggled for five years. and. At the five-year mark, it took off, and and out in it up until uh, March of 2020, I was doing it, and I was doing a good job at. It. Wow, that's I, I love that. And so let's talk about marketing. You know a little bit about marketing, obviously. You've spent your life doing it. So what are what are the what's the best thing that you do? And then we'll talk about maybe the second and third best things that you do. What's the best thing that you do to grow your business? The best thing that I I do to grow my business is believe in myself. Um, when I'm talking to people about marketing and I tell them how much I spend, they, they are in awe. But you have to invest in yourself. Um, what we do, the, the majority of our, our business comes from um, Facebook, um, the sponsored ads. Um, we spend probably anywhere between 400 to $600 a month on sponsored ads. And from that, we get about three to six messages a day from people who are wanting pricing. And at that point, um, you have to close those people. Some of those people, their concern is price. Um, if you talk to them and let them know what you're going to do or what they're getting for that, because they don't know, they don't know what to expect. In their mind, they're just, they just hear a price. So you give a price, you give a feature, you give a benefit. Now, um, features and benefits have always been what you hear in marketing. Uh, a feature would be, an example of a feature is the price. The, the example of a benefit is what you get from that price. So if I give you a feature, then I have to give you a benefit. Every time you ask for a feature, I have to give you a, a benefit to that feature. And as long as you keep a balance with features and benefits, you will close and you're not going to close everybody, but you will start to see that you will get a lot more yeses than you get anything else. Um, here lately, we're getting, um, well, well, let me think about it. And I am a very impatient person, and I have to say, yes, ma'am. And then I'm starting to see that when I don't show that I'm pressing, those people generally come back in a day or two because maybe they went somewhere else and they didn't get the features and the benefits. All they got was the features. So patience is something that I'm having to learn and I'm starting to, to reap the benefits, the rewards from the patience that I'm, I'm learning. And, and 
how are these, so you do a Facebook ad and you know, I do, I spend literally 10 to $15,000 a month on Facebook ads. So we know they work. Uh, I, I'm, I, that's a smart, that's, that's a difficult thing for a lot of people to do. They're, they're nervous about letting their money go, but you have to be smart in how you target it. You got to target it geographically and you have to target it to the right age group and, and you have to target it to, you know, we know from our data and we've got a lot of statistical data that, that women react to our yard decor ads more than men. Um, and, and, and there are certain age groups that react more as well. And so your money is best spent on the, the demographics that react the best. And do you see some of that same thing? Absolutely. The, the majority of the people that respond to us are women. Um, the decision makers are women. Um, they, they're the ones that usually will say yes. Um, we, we do see a lot of that. The part that when I'm talking about the patients is, well, let me run this by my husband. And that's something that you, you have to get used to because it, is, it happens, it's gonna happen. And then when they get back to you, then um, it's usually yes. And then I want this, 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 and that. They, and then it flows smoothly after that. Um, and I was, I talked to my wife about that, and she says, "Hey, that's the way it's supposed to be. You shouldn't be making decisions without talking to me. She shouldn't be making decisions without talking to her spouse because that's that's how couples work. And so we see a lot of that. And um, the, the men when they message and um, they they men will normally ask more questions. Um, their questions is is, is sometimes uh, about the price, but then they want more. Men will want more features. They want to know the the price and um, what size the signs are. Um, women will ask all of that and more, but they're letting you know right from the start they want it and they know exactly what they want. Men need to be told what they want so yeah we, we, we can. i was gonna say i find them, you know moms they know they want to get something special for their for their kids well, dads do as well but um right. you know it just seems to be more moms than dads so let me um let me ask how are people reaching out to you are they reaching out to you via facebook messenger or do you put your email address in the ad or how, how are they coming to you we use Facebook Messenger, that is the majority of the, the way that people are coming to us. Um, on those ads, my phone number is there. Um, we will get more phone calls, um, but we do get text messages um, from people who saw the ad. So first is Messenger, um, uh, phone calls, and then text through there. We do have our email email address there, but we get a small percentage of people who actually use the email. Uh, the email, my wife checks that more than I do because I, I tend to forget that the email is there. Once I start communicating with somebody by email, I move them to text message. Um, I, I like to have, have it streamlined and, and I can move faster and I can be more accurate on text messages than I, I can on um, communicating with someone. And are you using your personal phone or did you get a secondary business line? I, I have one cell phone number that I've only I had all my life. Um, whenever I went into um, publishing, I had an office number and a cell phone number. Um, but the majority of my uh, literature and my marketing um, pieces had the cell phone number on it. Um, so when I stopped doing the publishing. I just used the cell phone number. My cell phone is my personal. It is the business. So when I answer my phone for my mother, for my dad, for my wife, I say, hey, this is Chet. So my friend said, why do you answer the phone that way? I said, because I'd rather explain to you as, a, as my friend why I answer the phone that way than to a customer who's calling about business why I just said hello. So. I have one phone number, and if that works for me, um, that doesn't work for everybody. But I can't have two or three different phone numbers. I'm, I, I, I go nuts. Well, and you know, the great thing is that uh, today it's so easy to block somebody on the phone if they become a problem. And you know, yeah. people really aren't problems. It's more the spammers who are the problem. 
couple before we run out of time, a couple more questions. Um, do you, did you go out and buy insurance for your business or how, how do you handle that issue? We are uh, under our parent company is, is in Mesquite LLC. Um, in Mesquite LLC has insurance. Um, ETC Yard Art is a subsidiary of In Mesquite LLC. Uh, we probably, and I know that this, we probably need to protect ourselves a little bit more than we have. Um, we're still learning. Um, there are people that have been doing this for, for many years, and I, I've been in this business a short period of time. So we're, I'm working from common sense and and, and bringing another business and trying to use what I've learned in, in other professions. Um, there's other people who, who can tell you that you probably need more insurance than, than you have. And when you think you have enough, you probably need more. Um, and I'm glad you brought that up because my wife and I talked about this some time ago and then we never brought it up again. So we're probably going to look into getting more insurance than we have just to cover well, ourselves. The nice thing is, you know, now have a profitable business and it's easier to right. pull the trigger and make those decisions once you're once you're profitable even though you know ideally you're you're tackling those before you become profitable so what when you've got 15 setups to do how do you map all that out <laughs> um we do a lot of writing like um i i'm i'm a writer i i, I love to to write so if i have 15 setups um, the way that I, I map them is I try to do the ones closest to me first, and then I work my way out. Um, I, 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 if I have 15 setups to do, I've, I've told everybody that they're going to be done by 8. So if I have to start at 9 o'clock at night to be done by 8 a.m., then I'll do that. If I start at 9, I'll do 4 or 5. I might take a three-hour nap, and then I'll continue to, to do the, the rest of those and and to be done by eight, and I've, I've, I've not been late yet, so um, I get those those out starting closest to me and working my way out. We've only had that, that problem once, twice, where we had 13. Um, we haven't been in this business, at, at least to this point, we've learned to try not to do that. At some point, it's just too many, and I don't want to upset somebody and I don't want to be so tired that I can't put the things in the on the lawn in a way that each home or each person is happy with what they have when they wake up the next morning. And how long does it take for you to set up, uh, do a setup generally? Generally, once I uh, arrive, I want to be done with it 30 minutes and, and on to the to the next lawn. Um, so about 30 minutes. Okay. And and talk to me about the type of steaks that you prefer. Obviously, you know, other companies offer their steaks. We offer three or four different types. Do you have a preference among the steaks? I, I don't have a preference with steaks, and I need to have a preference with them because the problem that I'm running into now is that the signs, sometimes I can't get the sign to stand up straight. Um, and I've been told that I need to go to 10 gauge. Um, my, I think my wife likes the easy steaks. Um, we were doing um, taco folds for a while, and then we got the uh, the, uh, the steaks from you guys to where we don't have to bend our steaks. And for the letters like the Ys, and I think uh, ones, and um, some of the uh, characters that are smaller, um, we got recently from you guys. And my wife loves those. The taco folds make it harder to store. Um, the new ones that we got are the smaller, and so it takes up less space. And having been in the business, even the short period of time, and having as much inventory as we have, um, storage is starting to be an, an issue, and will be an issue for a lot of people if they're not planning properly. Sure, that's that is. We hear that a lot. It's storage, 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 and so it looks like you use some some plastic tubs to store. A lot of yours. Do you have a specific storage strategy? I, I don't. We use the bins uh, for the uh, uh, the letters. We use the bins um, for uh, the flares. Um, the boxes that a lot of the letters came in from you. We use those 
for the uh, ones that are going to be on the ground, um, the, the stakes that we dog leg, we keep them in alphabetical order and, and we use those boxes for color. Um, there's probably a better way to do things that the way we are doing it, but um, the way we're doing it right, right now without ever having been taught a way or finding another way works for us. But the bins, uh, we use the bins for storage and for transport. Um, we have bins with wheels that I like, um, and then we have some smaller bins that I like if I'm not doing that many yards and so that uh, I can reach everything. That sure, that makes sense. Well, last question. Uh, first of all, I'm Steve Grubbs with VictoryStore.com, and this is Chet D. Arnold with Etc. Yard Art. And uh, we spent 30 minutes here covering a lot of topics, so if you came in late, take, uh, take some time to listen to it. When We will put it on our podcast, our yard card cast that you can – download on your iPhone or Android. It'll also be on YouTube if that's how you, how you prefer to watch. And we will turn it into a transcript and uh, post it on our website so you can actually read it if that's uh, your preferred method. So last question, Chet. If you could give one piece of advice to people who are just starting out, what would that be? I like that question. Um, my biggest piece of advice is it doesn't matter how long you have been doing this. If you've been doing it 10 years, 15 years, um, there may be somebody that's been doing it one month and figured out how to make something more efficient. Um, it doesn't matter what background you come from, that it could be somebody that's been doing this 20 years and can give you some advice on how to make whatever you're doing better. Um, and I, I can learn from anybody, and I certainly do. Um, the Victory Store um, page has been helpful to me. Um, there have been other people uh, that have ordered things that I've seen that I, I like. Um, there's been people who have posted layouts of things that we didn't think to lay things out that way. Uh, the, the advice part of this is you can learn from everybody. You can learn from somebody being successful. You can learn from others' mistakes so that you don't make the same mistakes. And more than anything, you got to have fun. I try to find fun in everything I do. If it's if I'm out at 5 or 6 in the morning and the sun comes up and it's a beautiful sunrise, I'm going to stop and I'm going to take a picture. Um, I, I like to interact with my customers and I like to, to – we I just, just have fun. Uh, have fun no matter what you're doing. And um, sometimes uh, uh, that fun gets me in trouble when I'm having too much fun with the customer. If they walk outside and then I'm, I'm, I need to be going on to the next place, but then I know that that customer enjoyed it. But just learn, just keep learning, keep learning. Great. Wow. Customer, customer service. Uh, and I, I made a note to, to speak on customer service. No matter how good you are at what you're doing, you have got to spend some time being uh, – uh, with customer service and making sure that you have great customer service skills. That's going to be where you make the most strides in repeat customers and new customers and referrals. You know what, Chet? Thank you. To me, you are the epitome of the American dream. The pandemic dealt you a, a, a bad hand like it did so, so many people. But uh, you you picked yourself up and you are now – running a great business and you're you are your own boss and that's what so many of us have always aspired to so so congratulations to you and thanks for spending 30 minutes with us today all right thank you for having me i appreciate it chet everybody thanks for joining us and uh check out the podcast or the youtube or the transcript on the victorystore.com website i'm steve grubbs thanks for thanks for watching